Welcome back, everyone, to Sandy Lost, a podcast where I don't have any plans anymore. What does that mean? It means there were plans written for this episode. Not anymore. <laughs> you just threw them uh, out? <laughs> oh, boy. By episode, I meant chapter. Wow. So once we get to the Q&A, we need to hear all about nope. what it is we broke. <laughs> no, it's... I'm not telling you nothing. <laughs> Why I also not? lost roll 20 on the tabs. There it is. <laughs> Why not? Can't leave us in suspense like that. Come on. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time. It might be one of the biggest if you told us nothing, though. Uh <laughs> Lack of information. Hey, I decisions mean, some, were made. Uh, I have a hunch on some uh, some things that may have been intended that we have chosen not to um, explore. Oh, you uh, mean like going to the death circus? Yeah, no. <laughs> you don't know what's down there. No, 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 no. You told me all I needed to know. I told you saw tent flaps. <laughs> yeah, that's I enough. I asked if they look like circus flaps. Yeah, that's enough. That's all. Yeah, you're also the one that you're, everyone's just jumping to assumptions about good old Theodore. Always. I mean, Theodore seems like a, a quite an upright citizen. I don't see what I, the problem is. Do you remember I that the he, games. he's dragging <laughs> something? Do you remember that? Yeah, because I said it. Like a like a body or something. I never told you what Maybe it was. Maybe it's a bag of weapons. Maybe it's For Halloween us. candy. In February. <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, is Theodore going to cosplay as Jack Skellington for Christmas? <laughs> a Christmas bag in February. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why Jack Skellington got shot. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think we'll win in a fight? Jack Skeleton, Snoopy Red fighting the Red Baron, or um, an alligator? What? I don't know. I couldn't think of a third option <laughs> off the top of my head. Okay, I'll make it more fantastical. Okay. An alligator with two top hats on. More oh, definitely the top hat of alligator. Obviously that one. Exactly, because it's actually Mr. Monopoly, and now they're both in <laughs> years and years oh of debt for landing on Park Place. Uh, yeah, I mean, true. True that. Can you imagine if Sandy Lost catches like the eye of some weirdos and it grows up? To the point where we can make a sanity lost um, monopoly. Monopoly. Game. I mean, what would that even look like? Confusion. I, <laughs> I still wouldn't play it. The, the four uh, four yeah, railroads. No. Theodore. Uh, <laughs> Theodore Buster. It would be no the, the fire have... it would be <gasps> Uncle Buster. It would be Uncle Buster's Road Circus. The jail um, would be the like circus you just get like thrown there for eternity. But no, that's not how Monopoly works. <laughs> well, in our Monopoly, you said it was chaos, right? So you get in there and you never. I come guess out. instead of money, it would be sanity points. <laughs> I would like to spend five hundred sanity to own um, Cora's uh, general store. <laughs> I mean, I think we might need to come up with I, some more places. I don't think uh, it's uh, that hard to actually get Monopoly custom Monopoly sets printed, but you could also we do this just in make our own. Thing. Yeah, I don't want to do the work though. <laughs> <laughs> we, we start brainstorming it, and we, we can start putting stuff together in tabletop sim. <laughs> do that, and then uh, yeah, because all the player promotions. all the player tokens would have to be uh, it would definitely have to be the all the playable characters. No, you know what would be jail because nobody trusts him would be hang out with Theodore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fireside chats with scary. Theodore. Yeah. Fireside chats with Theodore. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, let me go, let me go, let me go. <laughs> but uh the vehicles could be um the road circus, um, Charles's car. Nice. Uh, um, the mine work truck. 
Yeah. <laughs> Caleb's beat up work truck. Yeah, Caleb's beat up work truck. <laughs> the bus. <laughs> yeah, and the bus is just on fire. <laughs> and then... Yeah, and then the purples would be uh, Timmy's apples and Timmy's knives. Yes, please. <laughs> Let's see. The taxes would just be called uh, sanity tax. Community chest could be D pain mythos. <laughs> uh, chance would be uh, luck. Yeah. Luck roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, gosh, I haven't played. Uh monopoly in so long i don't I, know that i know how to do it i only anymore. know this because i watched uh, a different uh, a group uh, m they pretty much made their own giant version they all played on oh interesting that. okay but it's all like based off of their own content and stuff yeah yeah, yeah. that's cool i mean it's definitely a cool idea i, I don't know that i like don't... monopoly enough though oh yeah me neither no no i also don't have the time to brainstorm this. No. <laughs> I mean, we just did half of it right there. We got the yeah. big pieces. Yeah. Now, let's be real. Uh-huh. We would definitely be able to make a risk. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, no. You would have the Centralia faction, the SSD faction. Oh, my gosh. You would have the Road Circus faction, and then the Theodore, which is just one. <laughs> it's just one token <laughs> but he he never dies <laughs> Sanity really lost pandemic anywhere. yeah he just assassinates things <laughs> Sanity like lost pandemic game oh gosh oh uh, yeah there we go you're just catching uh insanity throughout <laughs> the game i think uh what would be a fun thing is to what uh if we wanted to d make these characters in another medium, I think Betrayal would probably mm. be a good one. That could be fun. Because yeah. that one, um, it would just need a little bit of tweaking, but uh, all the scenarios could fit Sanity Lost stuff. Maybe after season two, you, if we you know do a season be, two. It could be interesting to take these characters into something like Betrayal Legacy as the different ca uh, characters in that. It'd be a completely alternate storyline, but it well, could who be would I play? <laughs> I mean, we've got a variety of characters to choose from. I, I, I like the idea of Korra going in as uh, chapter one yeah. and then having chapter five Timmy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> The, like, clash of worlds. No, let's be honest. If I was going to bring someone in, it would be Theodore. Yeah. For sure. Just you'd, max stats. You would, always, <laughs> you would constantly be the uh, the the traitor. Wow, you guys He's assume like so the, little. The one character that ties all the, the uh, lore. The other the characters universe. together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's... Is that what Thanos does in the... the not in the X-Men. Um, the... What's it called? <laughs> the end game. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Is that what, what are... it is? Avengers. <laughs> oh, I was like, what are we talking, yeah, like, about, talking about, Dave? I have no idea what you're talking about. I stopped watching Marvel movies back after uh, oh the last God. one I watched was Civil War. And then I never watched one since. That's not true. I watched uh, Miss Marvel or Captain Marvel on an airplane. That I was like, yeah, it's a movie. Yeah, I mean, I think, and I mean, we've seen bits and pieces of them, or like yeah, we've I mean, not, the, we've seen certain movies, but I think the last one we watched after Endgame, I think, was just Thor Ragnarok. I think that's yeah, I was one gonna we say watched. we we've definitely watched some of the not TV been shows, but as consistent mm -hmm. after Endgame, so. Yeah. Yeah, I think Ragnarok is really the only one that I would like to watch at some point because I heard that it's just fun. Yeah, it's just like, it's like 80s vibe, just kind of silly. Mm -hmm. uh, it, apparently, from what I was told, I stopped watching Marvel movies when they apparently got good. <laughs> and yeah, depending on of. who you ask... 
depending on who you ask, they've always been good. To what I say, you never watched a real movie then. <laughs> but <laughs> I guess now it, that we've... somewhat depends on what you watch them for too. If because if you watch, there's a lot of things that if you watch looking for a good movie with plot and all of the, those things, then yeah, you're gonna be disappointed. If you want, if you watch it for the ridiculousness of it, then a lot of them are quite enjoyable. Yeah. Nope. So always go in with low expectations, and then you get uh, you're pleasantly surprised. I when do, it's enjoyable. and I'm still disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe your expectations weren't low enough then. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Disney, for ruining cinema. Hey, you know what we want to talk about? Good cinema? Godzilla. Still haven't watched it. Oh, gosh. That's coming back. I never left. I haven't watched that one yet either. Oh, that's right. You and John need to go. You guys didn't plan that. You need to plan that. (laughs) I did go see the uh, new uh, Hunger Games movie, though. There's a new one. There's a new Hunger Games. Yeah. uh, I haven't watched the the first one. It goes back to the very beginning of the Hunger Games. Do they have guns? So did she write a different book or are they just like... I don't know. I didn't okay. even know it existed until I was like, hey, you know what? Yeah. I'm going to go see a movie Saturday. And you looked, I looked it up. And I saw that one huh. was there. It's like, interesting trailer. Yeah, that is interesting. This sounds okay. interesting. But yeah, it goes back to the... Huh. The, the All right. movie is mostly set in the 10th Hunger Games, so 65 years before the... this was the first one. It's like 65 years before the original trilogy? Or quadrilogy? I want to know... How did they sell, hey, let's have our kids murder each other for sport? No. To masses, amounts of people. Um, Hey, could you imagine? Let's sit there in this meeting. Hey, night... You are going to be the person I'm selling this to. I'm going to pitch it. Hey, sir, you want to know something that can really knock your socks off? Well, I'm glad you didn't answer because I'm going to tell you. (laughs) Now, you know that annoying brat that just freeloads in your house that uh, you and your wife decided to be like, hey, this might be fun? Now, what if you got them out for an extended weekend to hang out with other annoying brats? with a chance that they might not come home. Sounds like a deal to me. I'm I'm in. (laughs) Exactly. Here's some Twinkies. I don't know what they give out in the Hunger Games. I just assume they hand out food because that's part of the name, Hunger Games. Oh, my gosh. For every person your child murders, you get an extra Twinkie. And if they win, spam. <laughs> yep, that's yeah, exactly yeah, that, that how it works. That sounds exactly right. Mm-hmm. That's exactly there we go. How it went. We'll, we'll, we'll let you uh, just. We'll 100%. let you stick with that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. So, guys, um, next uh, dystopian teen murder movie that you need, uh, just go watch Battle Royale in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> that way, I don't have to do more work. It all. Yeah. You like seeing teens murder each other for no reason? <laughs> no. That'll do it. Inner city politics. <laughs> <laughs> Any <he> poop. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, moving on. <laughs> hey, do you guys like this song? I don't, because it's the wrong one. <laughs> I was like doing a 50-50 in my head like odds are it's the one he wants. <laughs> and I won. What you win? Satisfaction Spam? of knowing that I know you, Dave. <laughs> That's the real prize in the end. <laughs> or is it the real price in the end? Uh, that's for you guys to figure out in therapy later. <laughs> I don't think there's any therapy good enough for that. <laughs> I thought this was a completely different song because we were talking over it and it's very soft in my ears. And That's two out of three? We're going to no, find it's, the... <laughs> no, it's, it is the right one. No, this is the right one? It oh, is okay, the right okay, one, okay. but it was like there there was a, just a tone. Uh, to be fair, uh, there was someone I talked with at PAX Unplugged 
that we might I might be switching to their service and oh yeah yeah uh, I can talk about it in between episodes but we are already stalled enough because I don't know how long things are gonna go so <laughs> <laughs> it's one of these things I don't know it it's something that cracks me up I listen to um, a couple different podcasts and one of them is just the the keeper well he's not a keeper uh gm anyway the guy running it he's like yes i will talk about anything we can to just i'm not ready to go into this episode i'm just i'm just i don't get it I sort of get it uh, <laughs> <laughs> i get it now <clears throat> anyway so a bunch of stuff happened uh in the past couple episodes the pretty much our characters here made a couple of friends they like to get very close they look you in the eyes and just uh whisper you sweet oh my gosh you are gonna die um <laughs> while caleb got a very close encounter with one of them and uh, they generally figured out or thought they figured out or maybe have some sort of idea how these uh human not human looking creatures are uh how they're behaving uh while just everything seems to be falling uh, apart around them i forget who rolled and who looked out the window was it I cora did. yeah, yeah. As Cora looks at, it's, no, definitely, yeah, it's, Cora. Say, it's definitely not Cora. Cora is Cora, not it, here. It would make sense. Cora is always looking out for Theodore because <laughs> she needs. That is true. Cora just Tim, like a Timmy needs a third dad. Wow. Uh, <laughs> first one hit the expiration date. The second one <laughs> pretty much is, um, I don't know, a right wing talk, uh, AM talk radio host. Uh, and uh, and then Theodore, who's always bringing something to the table every ten to fifteen years in between. <laughs> anyway, I mean, uh, we don't know if he doesn't if he shows up at other times. So that's just the times we know he's around. To be fair, he, he is canonically has shown up in the universe. Um, let's mm -hmm. see if I can't find, I don't know where I keep the notes for the charity stuff. Charity Palooza five. Those are, there we go. Um, he shows up in 1960, 1983 and 1998. But none of these characters know that. Um, so yeah, he has shown up in another location. That neither here there, and if you guys want to do that, go to the YouTube. There's uh, whatever it's called, the Charity Palooza Charity event. Charity Palooza. I don't remember what that series is called. I think it's called Happy Cabins or something. Anyway. <laughs> um. So yeah, Co not Cora. <laughs> Dell. It's because we were making big goose about Monopoly earlier. Uh -huh. <laughs> and now all these characters are coming to, like, flood him back in, in brain. Um, but anyway, uh, Deli looks out uh, the broken down uh, corner of the wall to see a tall, spindly man in a polka-dotted uh, suit, scraggly beard, also seemingly unaffected by the cold weather dragging something behind him uh he gets to the car about to the car as he looks up and waves we as char as characters as players and well me who pretends to know a lot more know who this <laughs> is for anybody that just seems to be showing up right now, this specific episode, uh, who would like to share share what you guys know of this character? I mean, what what do we actually know about this character? <laughs> I don't know. That's what I'm asking you. 
I don't that's know. Why he, what do that's we why he know? wants us to share because he doesn't want to accidentally overshare. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Dave. Tell us who is Theodore. Did they in the Q and A episode? And even if that episode, if, even if that you question, answer that question, I know. Um, I mean, Theodore so, is the one character that ties this entire thing through. Consequently, he still has some connection with Percy, who is our first loss of the campaign. Um, he shows up at weird, unexplainable times. Not totally sure if he's helpful or hurtful. Um, he's he, creepy. He's he, tall. He made Mayor Gillespie give mouth birth to weird insects. Yeah, he keeps collecting uh, all of these like powerful artifacts, and he is wanted by the Eye of Ophidian, maybe. So he but, has some sort of connection there. But at the same time, has not, at least as far as we've been able to identify, made any directly harmful actions either. And a couple of times has kind of saved our bacon as well. Yes. Well, and, like, possibly looked out for our kids. Not sure if he was, like, also trying to Pied Piper them, but, like, at least kept them away from Carl Giuseppe's weirdness. So I'll give him that. Um, I mean, he's one of my favorite characters as a personal player, but <laughs> I don't actually know what we know about him. And the important thing to note for anybody here that this is the first time these specific characters maybe... David, so, I, I don't know if Dave, David may have heard stories of him, yeah. but I don't think he's ever, well, to the fully best of, recognized him. Yeah. So to the best of my knowledge, David has not directly seen uh, Theodore, but would have heard stories about him. And what I'm wondering character wise right now is, has Theodore's only waved, right? He hasn't said anything mm -hmm. yet. Correct. Okay, so at this point, David doesn't even know that somebody's out there because he's mm -hmm. kind of yeah, I've backing up, it. watching all of these other creatures that are on the second floor of this building with them, trying to hopefully keep them from advancing, while the other two are working their way towards this gap in the wall and mm -hmm. theoretically keeping David from stumbling in the process. Yeah, uh, I will say one uh, one thing. Uh, David has met Theodore. I forgot in the beginning of this chapter. Now we can say that he didn't recognize it because Caleb was oh, in the right. hospital. Yeah, yeah. Because Theodore walked out of of the room. Now we can totally play it off in saying that um, where Cora was, right? No, he yeah. walked. He, Cora was he walked, in the same er, general area, I believe. General yeah, area, but, yeah. But well, Theodore he walked did out walk of, by. He walked. He walked out of Caleb's room into Cora's. Okay. Okay. Uh. So I think David might have that as kind of a. He might recognize it as being the same person that was there, maybe. But I mean, he is also very distracted at that point too. Yes. Uh. It, I was just going to say, you have been in close proximity of Theodore, but it would totally make sense that David does not remember that because of the events of a giant bull creature running through Centralia, ripping up the town, and Dad getting 32 degree burns. Yeah. 32 with his, not great. <laughs> with his two best friends. <laughs> Good times. Um, okay, so uh, Cora, like, wide-eyed, because he's just standing there and waved at her, right? You mm mean -hmm. Adele? Oh, gosh. Dave, <laughs> you got her in my head now, too. <laughs> yeah, so Adele is... Like, are just... we flashbacking? What are we doing now? <laughs> <laughs> we could, if you want. I can't play this game tonight, guys. I can't. You um, agreed. <laughs> so she... Uh, Oh, gosh. Okay, hold on. I have to, like, get into this moment. Yeah, so Wide Eyes staring at this weird creature, and she just, like, loud whispers. Because I think, I know we were, like, orienting, but I think, like, uh, August is 
nearby, mm -hmm. and David is staring at the things, right? Yeah, I Where think did we're we all, all end. I think we're I all think... relatively close together at the opening to that in that corner. Because that's building. where we were yes. headed. Okay. Yeah, you um, guys are all kind of collected near the entrance of of the stairs. Yeah. Uh, that go into the, the ground. The spooky stairs. Yes. Right, and the goal was Which... that we were going to try and jump out the window. Mm -hmm. That's what we were considering, at, at least, whether or not yeah. that's... What we do, right, but that's what <laughs> yeah. we're headed towards. Yeah. Um, so Cora, like, loud whispers. Guys, someone's out there. Augie's like, um, there are a lot of people out there. No, no. No, it's... He's waving. I don't... Um... I don't know. It, it, he's. It's different. It's. It's not. It's not one of the things, but it's a different thing. August, just look. Um, quick reminder: Are we? We have these things in the room with us currently, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're at a position where I think you and David are looking at them. I think yeah. is where we. Pretty left. much, there's one in the middle of the room, and the rest are kind of just their heads, and they're kind of. The mass majority of them are congregated towards the stairs, right. and the other one is in the middle of the floor. So August is like, while I would love to come and look at your weird waving man, the only thing that's keeping us from getting overrun is me watching the stairs. So you may have to just tell me about it. He's, it's tall? Um, it looks like a human, but not, but different than what we're looking at. And then Ad Adele just turns out the window and she goes, hey, are you friendly? Hello, Mrs. Lockhart. Excuse me? Please move back. And oh. go ahead. I, I so I also did this as a luck roll, uh, as part of looking at this, which is a thirty-four under fifty-five. I think mm -hmm. David is going to have like some faint, would have some like faint recognition of that kind of resonates with descriptions he's heard of this mm -hmm. voice, be with that really slow cadence, um, and be like just kind of shaken for a moment, just like. And then hearing move back, like, I, I almost, it feels like I should recognize this voice. I, I think maybe we should listen to it. Listen to this person. While he's talking, he's also slowly moving closer to the opening in the wall. How tall, how, how close, because he's super tall. Like how close mm -hmm. does the like his head get to like this opening? Um, uh, let's see. It would have probably been he he. It's not like he can look over it, but yeah, he, maybe I want to say maybe it's a ten foot high. Uh, yeah, thing. And since it is just it's one of the things where I haven't never. I don't like giving exact measurements because I think that takes away part of the creepiness, but. If you look down, he his head is maybe just slightly below the bottom of the roof of the okay. of the ceiling of the first floor. Yeah, yeah. But so he's, he can he's definitely pretty close. he can definitely like he can definitely reach up <laughs> and touch the floor if yeah. he wanted to. Uh, uh, I think Adele just is like very shocked and creeped out, and so she just naturally moves back. <clears throat> and if you continue watching him, you see that what he is dragging behind him is this old weather-worn cracked uh, wooden ladder as Ooh. he puts there and then he just starts slowly climbing up it no no we want to go down Okay. Are you going to say anything as he starts so, walking up it or climbing so, up it? Uh, I think, I think Deli's like, uh, he's coming. Yeah, it's coming. 
And she's like kind of backing up away from the window. Or the um, hole. I, Del, I, can you watch the room let me, so I can get a look at this person? How fast is this happening? He's moving slow. Like he, okay. he it's it's yeah, he's it's it, there's there's some time. We'll just say that. It, okay. it, he's moving like uh he's moving just it's it's just a very strange kind of Yeah, yeah, yeah. I movement. Can picture it. Um okay, so Adele doesn't really say anything. She just like whirls around and like stares at the creatures. Oh. Uh. So you figured that out. Hmm. Intelligent. Hearing, hearing Theodore say that kind of confirms to David that Adele is probably watching, so he he take David's gonna take a look over his shoulder at Theodore and like just ha probably have a very puzzled look. Uh, do I know you from somewhere? And let's paint the scene as you turn around, uh, <laughs> as the green fire kind of just illuminates this s just frame of a human. Just uh, you see, just head and shoulders, and then it's just torso and more torso. As uh, you ask that question, as his one leg just uh, swings up into the room. And he kind of has to squat to be in there, just to make sure he isn't hitting his head on, on the roof. And I already forgot your question. Oh, do do I know you from anywhere? Is yeah, do I know said? you from somewhere? You well, you almost seem familiar. Mister Winters, I have known lots of places. I'm pretty close with your father. Close how? Why, we're best friends. What? I, I know Dad mentioned something that sounds like it might be you, but it never seemed like best friends David David what's happening this is not the time this is not the time to be having catch up conversations no no this isn't time for catch up conversations what about I see the pets are free as he begins kind of squat shuffling towards the center of what the room. What is August doing? Because August yes, is close I to this, know. this I thing. I think August is in catatonic <laughs> the way John's going. But yeah, what, <laughs> what, what is August's thoughts right now as just a, just a kind of quick refresher. August uh, almost freaking, <laughs> oh, not almost. He is definitely freaking out. And the next thing his sister says, there is somebody else. And the next thing he knows, the tallest and strangest creature has just walked through the door just saying everything I just said. So, <laughs> yeah. Is that, what would be the, let's see, let me pull the, what would be the, like, positioning? So you had he just came crawl, through, like, you the were... hole in the wall? Yeah, he came through the hole in the wall, and I believe you so I'm were... I'm facing away looking at the stairs. Yes, and your back is to the wall. Yeah, but the... you're right next to the window or the hole yep. because you crawled over the um, the, the door fire is stairs. That yeah. Spot is this spot here? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. No, no, closer. You're on the. Oh, I. <clears throat> <clears throat> you're right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. So you're you're on the exterior wall, the interior part of the exterior wall. Gotcha. So August is very intentionally not looking over at Theodore and is essentially <laughs> just whispering to my or whispering to himself he's not there you don't need to look keep watching the stairs just watch the stairs just watch the stairs and so is very very intentionally ignoring everything that is happening over to that side of the room <laughs> so you you're saying that and then 
from everyone else's point of view, uh, he, <laughs> Theodore, well, he hasn't even introduced himself, but whatever. We know who he is. But, yeah. Uh, he's just uh, kind of just cranes his neck to look between like his body and his arm over Ugh. at August, and he's like, he pretty much says, "No, I am real. Don't worry, Mister so Lockhart. I am friends with your uncle." Don't worry. And no. so August is like, August closes his eye closest <laughs> to Theodore and is just <laughs> looking at the stairs with the other one and he's just like, nope, nope. nope I'm nope. still here. <laughs> Did you get dust in your eye? <laughs> Do you need help, Augie? <clears throat> Ooh. So Deli, like hearing all of this happening and like feeling August's panic, or like yells because she's staring at the stairs and she's like, "I don't know who you are. I don't know how you know us. Can you get us out?" And he, it's just he slowly moves his head back to look at you. There's an exit. It's up to you if you want to take it. Are you talking about the circus stairs? Because I'm not going down the circus stairs. Is that how I came in? If you want to leave, your car is there. And he's still, while he's saying this, he's shuffling for, the, like, closer and closer, especially towards the creature that is in the middle. Okay. Okay, so he's just kind of moving. Yeah, he's not really... He's just kind of... He's slowly shuffling towards the middle of the room. And he's like, don't worry. If you have to leave, I understand. So, so now Cor now now Deli is curious because she has this crazy curiosity about the supernatural. I'm assuming if he's moving towards the center one, then he's like moving either towards or past her because she just essentially turned around and like yes. stared at the creature. Yeah, he's yeah. pretty much now moving in front of David. Okay, okay. So he's moving closer to her. So she pretty like Pretty much he's placing himself between the creatures and yeah. and you guys. Okay, okay. So uh Deli like looks like takes her eyes off the creatures for a split second to actually like really look at him and she like pauses for a second looks right back at the creatures and then she's like if we have to leave well friends don't always like to leave each other but I understand if there's a curfew so David's trying to get a better feel for whether Why or not. Why are you touching me? <laughs> Why are you touching yes. my buttons? Yes, I'm feeling. I am feeling yep. uh, Theodore. I no. do Pilates. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm trying to get a better sense for whether he's sincere and in what how he's interacting with us with psychology. So I rolled a 43 over 40 and used luck to make that a 40 as a success. And kind of as discussions, like, so what, do you know what these creatures are? You called them pets. Um, mm. What are they? They're not my pets, but the pets of another. And um, they broke free. Whose pets are they? Oh, an uncle that is not worth mentioning. Uncle Buster? I said not worth mentioning. <laughs> Are you our friend? That's what I hope to be. 
Cora. Uh, Cora? Gosh. Cora yeah, wakes up you. in a hospital bed. It's now 1853. She went back in time. I don't even know what has happened in the world at that point. <laughs> Just add another layer. No, Deli. Uh, Deli actually walks up to like stand next to Theodore. And she's also like staring at the creature still. And she says, can I help you? You know the Richmond child, don't you? Tim? Mm, yes. I think he would be upset if his chicks... That wasn't the right word, but anyway. <laughs> if his... If his children were lost and went astray. Give him this. And he slowly reaches into his uh, suit jacket and pulls out a pamphlet uh, that it's sewn shut. Like with a uh, like thick yellow yarn. Give that to the Richmond child. He can look, but don't open before you get there. Also, I think your brother needs to leave. He's a little crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Deli. No, go ahead. I was going to say, August... At this point, August is starting to feel kind of trapped and has begun to, like, furtively look at the door in the floor as a possible way out. So, like, he's he's kind of teetering mm -hmm. over the edge and... Or teetering on the edge and... Because you didn't see the ladder, did you? Because you no. refused to look. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so... like... How about this? Let's do something fun, which I know this is in a different system, <laughs> but let's do this here. We have three options. You can sit still. You can go towards, uh, you previously said we could jump or that was thrown out or the mystery paint steps. Now, which one pretty much this is what I was thinking we're doing. We're going to have 60, 30, 10% of saying what is August going to do so what do you think would be the least thing the least uh, knee jerk reaction uh, the, the likely. least likely or like yes okay. the least likely thing that he would do out of those three options least likely is he would continue to like sit there and not do anything Okay, so we'll put that as the 10%. So if you roll a 10 or lower, that's what's going to happen. Right. So 11 to 30, what what do you think would be, or we can do 31 to, to 100 can be, what do you think would he would definitely want, is uh, align himself with? The highest. Like a most likely. Yeah, yeah the most like likely the thing that... <clears throat> I yeah. mean, given his current, uh, it's kind of a toss-up, although I think I lean a little bit more towards going for the door in the floor just because it's easier access. Mm -hmm. uh, his other option is just making, like, a dash for the window. Yeah. So, let's, uh, let's, I want to tweak the numbers. Let's say it's, um, yeah, one, one to 10 is staying there uh 11 to to 40 is is there is a uh, window window and then 41 higher is going down the stairs okay and pretty much you are going to move to do whatever you roll right, right, uh, right. It's... all right Hmm. 
That is a 90. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> so, uh, you begin to walk down the stairs. Maybe okay, scramble. so he like timing so, wise, yeah. So like like narratively, uh, August kind of like there's too much going on around him. He's panicking. He's looking for a way out. He he sees the door, and so almost not even be thinking about it. Like he's not even like kind of cognitiz cognitizant of it. He starts crawling towards the door. And then I would assume kind of like falls through the illusion of the door, finds himself on the stairs, and just continues crawl, kind of like forward crawling down the stairs. Mm -hmm. So yeah. as, as like Theodore is saying, like your brother needs you, like how far, I'm assuming he's like saying that as this is happening. So how far down yeah. is he by the time, like he just, he's going to like just, immediately turn and You look. probably like turn and yeah. see like my foot disappear through like the illusion. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It, that's pretty much what it is. It's, it, it's all kind of happening very back to back to back. Yeah. That's what I figured. So, um, so Deli knowing what's down there, like screams, she's like, Augie, no. And then she like, runs down the stairs or into the stairs mm -hmm. hoggy yes <laughs> um so <laughs> all right well i so you're gonna try to i'm gonna get to him at least mm -hmm. so as i like head down the stairs she like knowing how this works she's gonna like also like stick her head in <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, how far down are you, John? He, I think he's just kind of just started going down, so he's not yeah. super far I mean, down. I'm not especially like if power crawling. It's more yeah. kind of like the okay. You know. So as you're headed down, you said that you're going head first. So your feet are yeah. at the the top. So she like sticks her head in and, and like sees his feet, and she is gonna grab a leg and like grabs onto his leg and she's like stop stop this isn't safe we can go i will get you out you have to come with me come on there's a ladder so augie's not really hearing her and so like kind of like his foot feels stuck to him so he's kind of like pulling on it to try and release it but still trying to move down the stairs uh so adele like full on <laughs> like twin tackles him like she is just going to like launch herself like i imagine like a pancake like she is just launching herself onto his back on the stairs we can take damage if you want but she is just like uh -huh. smushing him <laughs> to like get and to his down face the, down the stairs they go oh boy <laughs> uh what is what is David doing at this point? <laughs> you watch both of us so, disappear. Well, so I think, if you wanna, if you wanna help assist, then I, I think David hearing the hearing the the call for August initially from Adele is probably going to look over his shoulder, see see the start of what's going on, but not really fully engage that August is in significant danger at that point and actually turn back to Theodore and, and ask Theodore what what is down the stairs a holding place but you all aren't prepared to be there um i I think my friends might be heading that direction. How, how do I, is there something, I, some way of getting them out? They got in one way. They could come out the same way. As long as they don't stray too far. Is it safe for me to go help them now? Or do I need to be watching the room still? I can handle the pets. 
You help your friends. Okay, so uh, with that, David's going to turn and run over to assist with recovering the the uh, other two out of the staircase and mm -hmm. and repeat August August we've got a way out you don't need to go down these stairs the stairs are dangerous the stairs are very very bad for us stop so. August <laughs> stop August stop stop <laughs> no stop. please stop. don't go please come back we're best friends so um, so at the at the moment, August, basically, he just has, like, you know, white noise, like, <laughs> rushing in his ears. Like, that's that's essentially mm -hmm. all he's hearing. And with Adele, like, jumping on him and restraining him, it's kind of, it's tipped over that trapped feeling. And so he lets out this kind of, like, animalistic howl and just starts thrashing wildly, trying to get away and get down the stairs. Okay. Uh... Roll, uh... Is it... Um, not dodge, but, uh... Is it, like, unarmed, or... I know there's... Um... But there's something I want to say while, while you look at that to see, um... How to throw these hands. Uh... I mean, we it, have it, a brawl skill, don't we? Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. I, I think that's unarmed or brawl is... All yeah. combat. Uh, but one thing I wanted to mention was that um, that when when uh, David is is calling down to you guys, uh, Delhi's probably the only one that hears this. It almost sounds like uh, he's calling to you guys through water. Oh, interesting. Uh, it's muffled. You can hear what he's saying, but it's just m muffled and kind of echoey. Mm -hmm. And the further you go down, uh, I don't think August realizes this, but uh, Deli, as you kind of go um, a little bit farther, it, it's you can feel uh, almost a pressure in your ears, like uh, when you're on an airplane. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's just underneath here it's it's just it was already quiet upstairs but it's a different kind of quiet in here where your um wrestling and and the howl even uh should be a lot louder but it sounds muffled and echoey and distant even though he's right in front of you okay um so, Did you find the brawl role or? So yes. well, qu So question. So like there is brawl for fighting, but also like would I roll strength since I'm not really. Yeah. I well, you're trying to wiggle free. So if you think he would muscle his way out or try to wiggle out, mm -hmm. I'll, you can do strength or dexterity. Uh, how, long then, do, uh, how long do How long do runes take to cast? Uh, they're pretty much instant. Okay. They're, they're, they, do it, uh, I, some, it's, I think scrying, like, due to the description, some of them might take a little bit longer due to the flavor if you have to, to hold the spell. Like, scrying would take longer and stuff. But uh, a lot of them, to cast, it doesn't take long, but the duration of how long they last would depend on, on different things. Do I get any kind of advantage for the rune I would have learned from from Kalen? Uh, no, so the way runes work now is that you just spend the magic points and uh, to remember, it's a D straight 100 roll and you want to beat your power. Yeah, so lower than power. What I'm wondering yeah. is if I get any addition, any extra advantage on the one that I learned through Caleb from from nah, the it's all... just learned differently or nah, well, I'm more just, experience with it or something. Just to keep it easy, I just kind of everything is yeah kept the same. Because I, I think you learned the rune, but then uh, just your training through there either taught like 
the training through the SSD has showed either you a different way or, or something, which is why there's no longer a rune skill, but it's more just spells. So. So, David's just seeing how panicked August is and how much of a struggle it's going to be to get him to listen at the, the moment without him just continuing to charge down these stairs into more danger. I'm going to try to pin August where he's at so we can, <laughs> if we have to restrain him to get him back up the stairs after dismissing the room. Okay. So, how about, let's do this in order. Let's see, um, let's see if August can break free. Uh, whatever. Am I doing you're... something? Can yes. I... Yeah, okay. so I'm gonna say you're gonna just do a, a strength roll. Okay. Alright, I'm, I'm gonna roll with the dice you got me, Dave. So, I'm gonna need to... <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's uh, doing it, a strength roll, or I'm doing a strength roll. He's he, well. It depends on how he wants to. How August is escaping. Is he, if he's just trying to power through, or if he's trying to be slippery. But I'm gonna say that you, uh, um, Deli, are, are just trying to hold on. Yeah. So it will be a strength check. Okay. All right. I rolled a forty-two under eighty. For uh, was that dexterity? No, that's strength. August is apparently very strong. He's a jacked <laughs> scientist. <laughs> a scientist around. It's not what I was expecting, but hey, no, it works. That was, no, that was just the random roll. Not very dexterous, dexterous though. Only dexterous. Mm -hmm. Dexterous, there we go. Yeah. So you want to roll under your number, but then beat whatever he just rolled. Right. So I... Okay, so what did you do, John? 42. That would have been a normal success. Under okay, so, you, so I got yeah. a twenty-five under sixty. Yeah, so he's Which gonna is a hard success. Hard. Oh, uh, yeah. No, I think she. Because class of success, then the, yeah, yeah. the roll. Yeah. So. She is just like, listen, we're Quiet twins. Dawn. We grew up together. I know how to do this. I know how to scrap with him. <laughs> she just like gloms on. on and does not let go. <laughs> She's just like, Augie, okay, you have to listen to me. You're okay. I'm here. Stop! You're being an idiot! Stop it! Stop it! She's, like, screaming at him. I mean, you need to do the, like, haul off and, like, punch him, like, maneuver. To, like, oh, she's like, him. well, the problem, well, yeah, I guess it depends on, like, how she landed on him. I Like, if she landed on his back, I actually imagined in my head that she, like, grabbed <laughs> his hair <laughs> and is, like, just, like, like, wailing on his back like she's not gonna punch him in the face but she's like just like pounding on his back while she's like holding his head and like screaming at him hey right. um can i tell if their progress has been stopped at that at that point yeah you can tell that it's kind of stalemate right now because I, uh, I don't want to i david doesn't want to pin them unless they're continuing down the stairs no, that, I'm going to say right now they're kind of at a halfway point. Um, August, give me an intelligence check if you can to see if the if the shouts and everything are kind of getting through to you. Right. right. That is a 43 under 85. Yeah. Man, you just have the perfect stats for, for this. <laughs> uh, yeah, so maybe it's uh, the punch right to the neck as he says. <laughs> the throat punch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait, the only person that says my sister. Ugh. Yeah, he does. Wait, and what's the that hair up there? Pulling, the no. dirty hair pulling. No, August, don't go. <laughs> <laughs> Come back, please. Come back. You have the keys. Come on. <laughs> Giving David such this, this uh, monotone. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you did it. <laughs> okay, but with this, you're able to kind of think your way a little bit and just calm yourself down a little bit to where you recognize Oh, this is my sister. Not, mm -hmm. not a fun uh, whatever thing. 
a fun hug monster. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> until unless you do something, like I'm, you have to let me know that you're back. Otherwise, I will continue hitting you. <laughs> uh, yeah. So August is like, as he like kind of comes to his senses, he's like, Delhi, all right, all right, stop. It's I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay. And he, like, tries to, like, grab your hands and, like, restrain you and stop you from hitting him. <laughs> she the like, password? She, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she, like, What's, flops. What? Like, she's exhausted and just, like, so scared. She just kind of, like, flops on top of him and starts crying. And she's like, what were you thinking? Why? She's just, like, beside herself, and she just starts, like, pulling. She's, like, pulling at his clothes, and she's like, we have to go. Get up. And she's, like, just tries to start pushing him up the stairs, and she's just, like, sobbing. He's like, I, I know. I don't, I don't, I don't know, but we, we gotta get out. We have a way out. Just get back up here. We have a way out. <laughs> I am not going to tell you this. Stop that. David, that's so funny. He's August, like, we're fine, so guys. August lets uh And tonight's the night that I... <laughs> push him up. <laughs> Fluff, yeah. <laughs> you look up, David has eyeliner and is just wearing black. <laughs> Hair swept over. <laughs> Guys, come on! <laughs> the first, the first goth has been been born. Has been born. <laughs> Chapter one has been completed. <laughs> I'm gonna Ziggy Stardust this thing next. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we make it up the stairs and uh, head to the ladder <clears throat> to where uh, you guys can all see um, that. Uh, Pretty much, uh, Theodore is not looking at you guys, but he's like, he pretty much says, Oh, you're all back now. Well, get along. And, uh, who is going to go down the ladder first? Uh, so Deli looks at David and she's like, Please, can you just go? I can't leave him. And she's like hold, she's like holding onto August. So you just um, you go first. I'll make sure August starts immediately after you. I want to be able to keep an eye on what Theodore's doing. I'm not letting him go. Go. And so, what happens if he starts moving the wrong direction before he before you send him down? He's my brother. I've got him. David, go. All right, well, um, before David starts, gets on the ladder, David's going to call over to Theodore's, um, uh, thanks for the assist, um, thanks for the assist, friend, and starts climbing down the ladder. Okay, so then Deli looks at August and she's like, we're leaving, okay? You have to go down this ladder and get to the car. Well, hold up. Before we do that, you don't think it's just walking down a ladder? <laughs> Give me I a mean, luck roll. Say it was a, oh my gosh. A luck roll for a ladder climb? Can't this be like acrobatics or something? Did you hear how I described this ladder? <laughs> I know. I did hear how you described this ladder. Six under 52 for David. Oh, there you go. Yeah, it creaks, but everything seems fine. <laughs> okay. uh, and you're at the bottom of the stairs and once you get down there um, you don't pretty much you can see from the light coming down uh, the original stairs that it seems that all the creatures are now collected at the stairs uh, there's doesn't that at least the ones that you've seen there's there's none none other ones around so there's not one by the car or anything like that either? No, no. The one that yeah. was at the car is the one that kind of crawled up into the... Is the one that's now in the middle. Okay, so David's going to kind of... After scanning the side of the building and seeing them... Basically seeing the area clear is going to call up... Come on, August. The, the area is clear. Let's, let's go. 
so August, August uh, moves towards the window and starts climbing down the. Uh, well, first he moves towards the the window or opening or whatever. Looks around, scans around, makes sure there's like none of the things out there before climbing down. Yeah, you don't see anything. All right, so he uh, he like gets you know. Climbs on the ladder and starts moving down. Yeah, and I, I would also say that you can tell that David's also look. At, well, I don't want to take control of David, but I assume he's kind of looking just in case into the you know the place that can give you a little bit of sense of security. But anyway, you know what's coming up. Roll that look. Roll for ladder. <laughs> <clears throat> Give me a 37. Uh, that was a 38, actually. Oh. <laughs> 38 under 41. Yeah, so as you're walking down, it just... It seems that it's shaking and, and creaking extremely loud, but you, you make it down. Okay. Now this there is, is just ladder. two. Yeah, so uh, Deli... <clears throat> is watching August climb down the ladder, make sure that he gets down. And then she like goes to like swing her leg over to put it on the top rung. And she looks back at Theodore and she says, am I going to see you again? Mm, maybe, or maybe not. Just focus on leaving. And she goes, uh, well, friends stop by from time to time, just saying. And then she goes to climb down the ladder. Give me a luck roll. All right. Let's see. <clears throat> I don't remember what my luck is. Not great. I think Deli's going to fall off the ladder. Oh, five under 35. Okay. And it is just creaking up a storm, and it's just you can hear it, and it's just shaking and everything, and uh, you get to the the bottom. So all three of you are there. All right. So Impressive. then Deli takes August's hand, and she says, "Come on, let's go." And she like so, starts running for the car. It's impressive that Theodore managed to go up this thing with how, with how creaky this thing is. <laughs> he is a man of many talents. He probably weighs nothing, <laughs> let's be honest. Yeah. So uh, uh, David will follow and say, so what did he, what did he give you? Uh, we're in the car before she says anything. <laughs> She's not answering any of your questions until we are safely in the car. Actually, what's funny is I think Deli has the car keys. Was, or not, was yeah, I yes. driving? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, you have the car keys. Come out of the pit. <laughs> <laughs> Guys. Uh, yeah, so get in the car. Um, lock the doors. Turn it on. And she's gonna like start driving there there is no answers to questions until they are like heading out of this hellish place yep so any issues or anything you start the car and just give me one drive check because it is snowing it stressful situations have just happened even though it is a pretty, there is a, a road to follow, it's still <laughs> not the clearest. I was going to say, I've been rolling too well. Uh, 53 over 30. Hey. Right. Um, yeah, so you, you're you going and uh, you pretty much uh, are driving and it's extremely slippery and everything. And then all of a sudden... Um, you think you can see the road and then just this dark shadow just jets in front of uh, the car as you slam the brakes and slide uh, a little bit uh, and oh you're lucky uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> you just stop just inches away from a tree 
as your lights catch a deer. Oh. Just kind of running into the woods away from you. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. Let me just, like... And she, like, tries to compose herself and, like, tries to take off, but, like, slower this time, like, more, like, thoughtful and aware of, like, what's around her and the fact that they're in snow to, like, not repeat what just happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and taking your time and adrenaline, you get to the... You get to the the road and you drive away. Yeah, um, at which point, Deli, you know, and even uh, Knight, if you want to insert the question there, um, she, like, uh, pulls. Yeah, I imagine she had, like, pushed it can, into her satchel bag. You can even bag. set a mood. Maybe you put on the radio and maybe I don't know what song <laughs> this is. Oh, no. No. Uh, I was trying to find like a. Oh, August a good... is now pushing buttons on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's August like... is trying to find the music. He's like, he needs something to settle well, down, and then it's just like. He, uh, he kind of mutters to himself, like, as they're driving away, told you we should have left. No, and then. Uh, Del, Del, what, what, what was it that Theodore gave you? What did he give you? Yeah, and so that's where she, like, she like reaches out of her satchel and she's like um she's like yeah Augie you had a point as he said you always on radio have station. a point but we wouldn't have gotten this and she pulls out this like pamphlet and hands it back to David and she says we can't open it until we see Tim but that thing knows Tim and told us to give this to him. So David's just going to be kind of looking at it and examining it, looking at the ties. Is there anything, what does this pamphlet say on the, is there anything visible on the outside of it? Uh, it's pretty nondescript. Uh, there's, as you said, I think I said it was yellow thick yarn that's kind of just interwoven in there. Um, and, uh, yeah, what's, uh, what's kind of inscribed on him there is a name. I don't know if this name would, uh, stick out to anybody here, but it kind of bland kind of written text is Flanagan. Was that Percy's name? Percy's last name? I don't remember. Mm -hmm. yes. That's a good question. Uh, yes, yeah, it was, was Percy's. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. That was five years ago. <laughs> I, mean, the, the, I knew I'm that. Trying to, I'm trying I know to think Elizabeth if this is... She was the only one that was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think if that's a, if they if David would have. No. I don't think no. I don't think the, David through no. any of the stories or anything else. I don't think no. so. Yeah. I don't. No. I. I don't think Cora. I, they didn't talk. We we said it pretty early that they didn't talk about Percy a lot. Yeah. I and I think they do just would call him the friend or or something. Mm -hmm. It was if there was specific mentions to Percy. It was never yeah, I mean, in your presence. Th that's kind of what I was thinking, too. I was, I was trying to decide if there's any chance that stories would have tied. But I, I don't think that would have been any of the stories that would have been would have come up with David and Caleb or anything anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Flanagan. Huh. And while he's he said, pondering, he said uh, to give Dally, it to Tim? Yeah, he said to give it to Tim. <clears throat> and so while David's like pondering that, Deli like reaches over and just like grabs August's hand. And he crumbles to dust. No, <laughs> <laughs> no it's not dust, it's teeth. 
And she, no. oh, gross, <laughs> gross. And she like gives it a squeeze and she's like, you were really brave tonight. August just kind of like nods his head, but doesn't really say anything. And she like gets a grin on her face, like that, like, you know, when a sibling's going to be annoying. Um, <laughs> and she just like looks at him out of the corner of her eye and she's like, you know, I feel like, I feel like uh, you deserve or I owe you it. I told you so. These things are real. Um, he kind of like looks over with a very I told you so look and is like yeah no kidding so what 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 did you learn from all of this who who are we gonna listen to next time oh no Augie I get to say I told you so to you the supernatural is real. He just kind of like rolls his eyes as like there's an explanation. So uh, And she like slaps him on the shoulder <laughs> as she like goes back to driving. So what do you think they're gonna say back to the station? What are we gonna put in our reports on this? Obviously that we are the best rookies of their organization of all time. Rookie of the year team over here, guys. Come he, uh, on. August looks around the dash and is like, did you bring your camera? It's in my bag. Is it? I mean, I put it there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm messing. <laughs> yeah, you guys can have Roll it. Because I got some with pictures. a 50% penalty. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my luck at 35. The, the photos develop is just all selfies. <laughs> it's just your finger in front of the lens. <laughs> just all black. The lens cap on. They're like looking at the pictures later on. It's like, who gave her the camera anyway? <laughs> she just took it. <laughs> hey, we have we have a, a sealed pamphlet of nothing else. Yeah, I think the David only, took some pictures too. The, the mm -hmm. only picture out of the entire set that turns out is the the first one that David takes that with the uh, wolf print and everything. Oh, <laughs> the, 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 <laughs> the super print. like artistic <laughs> one. <laughs> and so with that, uh, maybe giggling out of stress and, and tiredness, uh, which it's now, I think it's like only ten thirty. <laughs> That'll happen well, in like 30 agonizing minutes. Uh, you guys drive down, and I think maybe you guys just find the first motel <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> Get the <clears throat> spend the night, and with that, we fade to black. And we will be going to chapter six uh, next step time, but uh, we'll, we'll have a QA question question episode but do you guys want to you want a little taste of a little something something always i mean this is not the show where we end on a happy ending come on <laughs> i know i just had to switch the music <laughs> so we leave uh, the camera kind of just pretty much a, a drone shot, imagine, as the car begins to pull away, goes down uh, uh, the, the highway into to finding a place to stay. As it pulls up and it comes back into the place where uh, these agents just left. As it slowly pulls in, uh, back to the green lit uh, stairs into the floor. Uh, except it's it's different. Um, it seems maybe there's less snow. Maybe there's a little bit a little bit more. It looks as time passed. 
as uh, pretty much an older gentleman begins to walk down, cane in hand. He's being escorted by this tall behemoth of a creature behind him. Uh, creature's the wrong word. It's another tall man, dark skin, bald head, standing over top of this uh, older gentleman as he walks down the stairs through the tent flaps as pretty much there's just papers and files just all over the place. Uh, his hand goes across a, uh, a table in the middle as um, it says, uh, you be journal, don't read. Scrawled on top of it. Um, and uh, he picks up an, a stack of papers that are next to it as he's flicking through there and the camera is able to catch a few things that, as it says, uh, uh, pretty much the top paper before he slams on the ground says, um, observations on body modification. But the person just slams these notes or tosses these notes back on the table as he goes further and further into this tent flap that is the, a tent that's within a tent. And when he walked in here, there was just this little station, but as he walks out of the other end of this tent, there's just this almost endless expanse of just uh, circus tents, old vehicles. We see there's an aged truck that has uh, and, and cages all with the Uncle Buster Road Circus. Uh, uh, just art and, and promotions as he kind of and it, this old man and this taller man make their way towards a certain tent as inside we hear uh, we see this kind of mass of, of bo not bodies but just this mass of a creature or just almost sludge that seems to be breathing. And as the camera just kind of cuts the black, we just hear, <clears throat> Why, hello there, Mr. Buster. See you guys next time. Oh boy. It's gonna be a, a spicy one. Okay, <gasps> we're gonna do a Q and A. So, <laughs> see you guys next week for that. <laughs> Until next Bye. time. Bye. Bye.